You know, it's funny. The the big takeaway I thought from OTAs was the news surrounding. Uh, well, first of all, it was the quarterbacks. I thought there was good news on all the quarterbacks, but the big news is that Brock Purdy is ahead of schedule, and um, and and it sounds like is on pace to show up and and play in week one, which is good news for the 49ers. Purdy told us he's on track to throw a football next week. Um, He's he's on pace to be ready for week one, according to Kyle Shanahan. Purdy says, I feel good. The arm feels good. He's already lifting weights. Of course, March 10th was his elbow procedure. And Shanahan, you know, kind of doubled down. He says, we're optimistic that week one, uh, you know, for Brock's return, which means he would probably have to return to actual practice and, and play sometime before that. But what do you think? I mean, we've been talking so much about this quarterback competition and Trey Lance and Sam Darnold, and we can get into how they looked yesterday. I, th- I had both of them down at 11 of 15. Uh, Brandon Allen I had down at 6 of 6 throwing. Um, but is it all for naught if uh, if Brock Purdy's ready to roll in, in week one? I mean, wh- what's – what should we make of this? This huge, all the discussion around a quarterback uh, competition this summer doesn't sound like there's going to be much of a competition if Purdy indeed is ready to roll. How do you see it? Yeah, I just think that there seems to be a level of trust in Brock Purdy uh, based on actions, words, lack of words, maybe just the whole picture. It seems like there's a level of trust in him that maybe isn't there for the other quarterbacks in the quarterback room. And I think at the end of the day, when you look at it, like, Brock Purdy played some very meaningful games in December. You know, uh, he went into Seattle. They clinched the division in a very hostile environment where they've had a really hard time winning games over the last 10 years. Uh, You know, played a really tough defense um, against Dallas at home. Well, you know, you can look at those performances and, you know, discuss how much weight he may have had in the outcomes of those games. He was still the guy under center. And I think the amount of equity that he earned playing in those high stress, high stakes games earned him that level of trust where I'm kind of sitting here and I'm like, man, as good as, you know, Sam Darnold or Trey Lance might look throwing the ball, you know, um, in shorts during OTAs or during training camp, even during 11s in the team period, how much can they really do in that setting that's going to push them past whatever equity Brock Purdy earned with basically playing football at the highest level you can um, right up until the doorstep of the Super Bowl, where they probably had a good chance of playing in two if he doesn't get hurt. So I just think it's, you know, I don't want to say it's pointless because it's not, but I do think that there's a certain level of like, if I'm Trey Lance or I'm Sam Darnold, I'm like, man, what, what can I really do during the next three months that's going to push me past this level of belief they seem to have in Brock Purdy? You know, the thing about Lance that's so intriguing is that, you know, he, said he feels 100% recovered from the ankle surgeries, said he felt really about 100% since March, um, and he's now fully recovered from the broken index finger that he suffered in 2021. And, you know, I thought he looked like he had a smoother, more compact, more efficient delivery. He took all of the first-team reps. I guess Darnold took the, the second-team reps, and Shanahan said he'll mix it up going forward. But um, it just kind of makes me wonder. It's like, the one thing about Trey Lance that I think I would agree with John Lynch is that I think Trey Lance for his own good needs to play football. And if, if they're going to go with Brock Purdy and um, then, then what does that do? I mean, what, what happens, what becomes of Trey Lance um, if, if he has to sit again, I mean, what kind of damage do you think can be done to his career if he doesn't get a chance to play? I think maybe like, you know, confidence comes into play at a certain point where it's like, no matter how much belief you might have in yourself and the amount of work you put into your craft, uh, if that's not reciprocated by the people that are, you know, responsible for putting you out on the field, I think there's a level of self-doubt that any human being, no matter how cool and collected they might be, uh, would start to feel. So I think that's probably the biggest concern is, you know, do you get to a point where it's like you're you're not only hindering the actual development you're getting on the field, but you're kind of creating this, you know, mental speed bump as well, where um, unless they're being very forthright with what they need to see to change, and there's something maybe um, specific that they're looking at, that's a reason why they haven't been as, you know, quick to push Trey Lance as a starter, you know, like he was the starter last year, which is what's crazy, right? Like you spent the whole offseason with him as the starter last year, 
And now there's discussion about him battling in a spot where he might end up as the third quarterback. So unless they're being very transparent with him about what's preventing him from having that same level of confidence that they had last year, uh, I think it's totally fair to assume that that creates a little bit of self-doubt that any athlete or any human being would feel. You know, and it, it's, it makes you wonder because, I mean, this is year three for Trey. He told us yesterday that he's working with or has worked with a sports psychologist and that he's enjoying playing football again. But, I mean, the pressure of being in this position for a, a guy who's, you know, really young. I mean, I have a 22-year-old son. This guy's 23 years old. Um, it's just a lot, man. It's a lot. And I'm just kind of wondering if, um, you know, if he doesn't get a chance to play here, that that's going to be rough. Um, you know, then it comes down to, well, who's two, who's three, who's four? How, how do you see the rest of the room? I mean, we, we're going to find out how they play this summer. Um, I've heard people theorize that Darnold was signed – because he would be the ideal Brock Purdy backup and that if Kyle wanted to, to bring in an ideal Trey Lance backup, maybe he makes a move for a guy like Marcus Mariota who ultimately went to Philadelphia. What, what do you make of, of the Darnold pickup? Is it just that, you know what, he's available and he felt a desperation to be in an organization like the Niners. And then they, of course, had the same, you know, they had reciprocal feelings, I guess, and, and liked him coming out. And this is why this is a marriage. Or do you think that Darnold stylistically, you know, di- you know, similarities, let's say to Brock Purdy was something that they sought after? I, you know, I personally tend to side that, like, I don't think teams necessarily are that particular about their backups in a sense where it's like, you know, if, if you have a quarterback that can run, the backup has to be a guy that can run. Like a perfect example, like you look at Arizona, uh, since Kyler's been there, Colt McCoy has been the primary backup for them. And he's come in and he's won football games for them, playing an entirely different style. So I think it's just at the end of the day, you want a guy that you can trust if, you know, you have to call upon them. And the 49ers have been in that position far too often lately. The, th- the thing with Sam Darnold that stands out to me is just how quickly he signed and the fact that he signed – and a, a deal that was so, you know, um, dependent on incentives, right? And right. why would he do that unless there was some level of, you know, we're not promising you anything. We're not saying that you're going to be the guy, but we're saying that potentially there's a chance for you to be the guy. To me, that's the only avenue where Sam Darnold takes a deal like that. And I know a lot of people feel that he's not very talented or they don't think he's very good, but when you look at the whole skate, like the whole scope of quarterbacks around the NFL, there's a lot of guys that could fall into that, you know, not very good or not a lead or whatever, however you want to tier these quarterbacks. And there are plenty of guys with opportunities out there that are not as talented as Sam Darnold. So to me, it's not a situation where it's like he just signed with the 49ers because that's all he was going to get. And he wasn't going to get any other offers through free agency. There wasn't going to be a better opportunity. I think he signed with the 49ers. And this is, again, this is just my theory on it. I'm not citing information or anything like that. This is just how I'm looking at it. I think he signed with the 49ers because Kyle Shanahan um, is a guy that gets more out of the quarterback position than most, if not all, uh, offensive minds in the NFL. I think it was a great spot for him to kind of rehab his image, uh, kind of recharge and reset and show the NFL world that, hey, if I'm put in the right situation with the right weapons, I have the talent to be a starter in the NFL, um, and I have the the capacity to be a guy that can um, carry that load. And I think he saw an opportunity where, you know, hey, you don't know how Brock Purdy is going to recover. You know, it seems like there maybe isn't a ton of confidence in Trey Lance for whatever reason. It just lets the vibe that's been given off. And I don't think he signs with the 49ers unless there was some sort of mutual discussion where it's like, hey, if you come in here and you play to the level that we think you're capable of, what's to stop you from being that guy here? I just don't see a scenario where he signs unless that was on the table. Yeah, no, I mean, that makes perfect sense. And yet, no, I know you're not citing sources. You're just kind of reading the tea leaves, so to speak. But Mm -hmm. um, that makes sense. 